So here we are in Nîmes and we're in the big amphitheatre, the Roman amphitheatre. Which apparently is one of the best preserved in the whole world. Yeah, it's, it reminds me actually of the one in Rome, the Colosseum, mm, from the outside. Colosseum. It looks very similar. Um, so both of us have just uh, come in and been guided to do a clearing. Up. Especially as this was built 2,000 years ago, so pretty much around the time of Mary Magdalene and yeah. Christ. It was it was finished, I think, in uh, it was about 2000 AD, wasn't it? I think something like 2000 AD. You might be able to hear. The Not sound. 2000 AD. We're 2000, 2000 AD. BC. No. 2000 years ago. 2000 years ago. Anyway, so what, about 18 BC. Whatever. I 2000 think it was years finished. ago. And it was Julius Caesar that had come over, and it was, or it was his son Augustus. And who knew that actually this part of France was part of Rome at that point? It was, and they they named it a colony. Yeah. So Rome had a very very extensive reach at that point. You might be able to hear the clash of swords and kids screaming. They're actually teaching kids how to sword fight. I mean, it's still going on today. They teach kids, kids about killing each other. No. But we've both been guided to sort of tune in and do a bit of a, a, a clearing. clearing. So we're a bit knackered. We've been at this all day. We're a bit like, oh, now, when do we get to go and have a glass of wine and like <laughs> chill out? So Laurie, what did you what did you pick up in here? Yeah, well, we've been listening to the recording and hadn't realised that actually this part of France was part of Rome back in the day. Uh, this was built about 2,000 years ago. So obviously a part of our tour is, is working with the time of Mary Magdalene and, and Jesus being around in this area. And so this building was constructed exactly at that point. And we just knew that we had to come in and clear some energies. Obviously this is a space that was devoted to human suffering and entertainment through people killing each other which even to this day every tv program that you watch nowadays is about someone's being killed or is killing somebody and it it hurts my head that that's what we are amused by but here it was so blatant because it literally was people being pitted against each other and one of the commentaries talked about the fact that they had to test the weapons to show the people who'd been waiting all day that these weapons were ready, which meant that they were really, really yeah. sharp. They were and sharp deadly. and deadly, yeah. And so just the idea of men having to come in here, men and animals, actually, having to come in and be pitted against each other while people cheered on and thought that that was entertainment. I mean, it's just... A, people suffering and, and hurting each other just ridiculous so I tuned into the energies that were here and there were layers so there were those that died feeling confused and in fear huge amounts of fear and so souls got stuck then there were the ones that died feeling guilty the ones that had actually been they'd had to go into anger they'd had to go into kind of rage because it was Mm. As you said, it was kill or, kill or be killed, so they had mm. no choice, they just had to do it. But guilt uh, for the survivors, so that then when they died, they carried that guilt with them and would potentially have been stuck here. Then there were actually the souls of the animals that had been involved in this that didn't mm. want to participate and all of the horror that they'd experienced. So I cleared all of those layers. Then it was the participants, it was the bloodlust and the bloodthirsty audiences of all ranges, from the rich and the poor, whose souls had somehow become entangled or had picked up spirit attachments, who then meant that they were attached to yeah. the arena as well. And then the final level was this really dark, really murky, horrible, it was almost like a serpenty energy that had been feeding on the blood because they kept turning the sand over to, to mask the smell and to, to try to hide the, the How the is blood that entertainment? Flow. It's gross. Imagine in the hot sun. Uh, anyway, this thing had literally been feeding on the energy, it had been feeding on the fear, it had been feeding on the, literally the blood that had been coming in here and that was pretty disgusting. And so I had to yeah. literally draw that up out of the earth. And then, of course, I had to, you know, part of it is forgiving all of these souls 
forgiving them because they were just doing what they thought was normal forgive them and send them home to the light just mm. bathe them in light and send them home it's enough you know and then there was a contract that was linked to entertainment via human suffering mm. which if you figure it's still going on all over the world now and as I said entertainment mm. it seems to be all about that every other show is a, a, a murder mm. show it is it's machine gun fire coming yeah. through the screen yeah. and even though they'd call it acting I mean it's still it incites violence yeah. it incites people to want to go and out exactly and the, kill I, each the other. idea that it's not implanting it in the consciousness that all you ever watch is people murdering each other in some form or another just hurts my head really it's just ridiculous and in fact there's more violence and murder on TV than there are sex scenes sex is yeah. actually more prohibited yeah and funny that because sex is actually sacred and pleasurable and, and usually based on love. So yeah. they call it, oh, you know, they, they say that it's not uh, appropriate, yet yeah. they'll have people lopping off each other's heads and, I know. and have shoot 'em ups and car chases. So the new contract, which it will be received by those who are ready and want to receive it, was about <laughs> human experiences and it was, it was more about love and humour and comedy. <laughs> Which, why isn't that entertain? It's why isn't funny. that the basis of our entertainment? I know it's like you, like harmless fun. It's much better. Oh, thank you, Laurie. <laughs> My arm's getting sore holding the camera. Um, well, I tuned in and uh, straight away I got a beautiful lion, like like a huge spirit lion that had obviously been here for quite some time yeah. and was possibly a, a bit of a guardian. Um, and so he kind of came in and was like put forehead to my forehead and then went off into the light and then I got shown a past life that this one and I had had as uh, two men, two gladiators, two slaves really that had come from different countries so we couldn't speak the same language. One felt a bit kind of Greek or Macedonian, I don't know where the other one was from. Um, and the, it was the idea that you had to disidentify with the humanity of the other person in order to kill them because it was kill or be killed. Um, and this goes on in the world today, on the world stage still, in wars, and this is a, a, a huge big contract that you have to step on somebody else in order to succeed, or you have to kill somebody else in order to succeed and survive. So I had to clear all of that. Sorry. Um, it's obviously uh, between us, but then it was also for the collective, so it was, it was all about, you know, kill or be killed. Um, there were so many other bits to it too, but that was sort of the main gist of it. So I'm glad I don't have to kill you now. No, well this is the thing, this is what we're here to do, to clear. So obviously we'd had a, a contract in that life to understand what it was all about, you know, to, to actually be part of it. And yeah. presumably now we're here to, uh, to release that karma, working together. As, and as women as well. Yes, yeah, you know, I know. Very... And again, with the whole time we've been here, we've been guided by Mary Magdalene and it has all been about love, hasn't it? And it's been all about the truth, so... We're going to carry on exploring. If we find anything else, we shall keep you updated. We've just reached the site of the foot of the walk, or well, the bottom of the walk, up to the Grotto of Mary Magdalene in St. Balm. You can see the sign behind us here. Um, we're not sure how long it's going to take. I've read various things that say it takes 45 minutes, but we've got a message that it's not to... actually going to take that long. So We're going to hike. <laughs> and uh, I've just, in my, <laughs> in my you know, little bit of French that I have, just also other people that are walking in the area, and uh, they have assured me that it is it is this way so uh, yeah we've been kind of driving and we're wearing gold and silver shoes <laughs> <laughs> in her honor yeah to do the hike as so. only ladies would do on a hike i actually wore these gold shoes hiking the atlas mountains recently so i know that they can do it <laughs> so we'll let you know what we find let you know what's at the top
So we're walking up the path and we've just seen two red, two red monarch butterflies. <laughs> Literally. One each. <laughs> but, yeah, but then came and thought they were playing together and they just flew around our ankles. I got oh, circled. Yeah. <laughs> it was gorgeous. So it's quite a hike. Yeah. But we'll do it. We can do it. We will get there. She was calling us. <laughs> <laughs> We're still climbing. <laughs> still going. Still going. Got a way to go, we think. Very much but... uphill. But a little bit like Nancy Girl, it feels like it's meant to be because anything that you do that's yeah. worth it requires effort. So Yeah. Whew. My calf muscles feel really like unnaturally tight. It's like are you gonna prove your medal and make it uphill? So we're gonna keep going. Okay. On keep going. Okay. Keep Ceremonial bathing before being greeted by the mother. <laughs> Feels good, Larry. <laughs> it's cold. <sighs> oh, onwards with the journey. We've come at just the right time because there's a lot of people leaving. I'm wondering if there was an early morning group or something or a mass said here. <laughs> <laughs> so we did it and it was meant to be silent not that we were completely silent nobody really was up there so we did do a little bit of filming but it was very surreptitious so it was mainly photographs really wasn't it we didn't yeah. want it it's a sacred space so but we did it so we're now running down the hill because now we have to get to the final piece which is the church of Maxim the Basilica, the Basilica of, Maximin. of Ma Maximin Maximin, Maximin. The Baum, where they claim... Oh, and there were some relics up there that they said were of Mary Magdalene. We don't think, we don't think it was. We checked. But know. it was still of a woman. It's yeah. said to be a, a Jewish woman. And at that time, no, 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 that's not that one. That's the, oh, the Jewish the one, one was in, in the church. Well, who's that one? It, it just said it was meant to be a relic of Mary Magdalene. It's probably a piece of the one that's in the church. I know, it probably is a piece of the one that's in the church. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. They tested it, wasn't it? She was of Jewish origin Yeah. of but, that time. But also, again, it's a message that... All women are sacred. Are sacred and equal. We're all the Holy Grail. Exactly. We're all the Christ. Yeah, Even all. men and women are the Christ. It's just you have to tap into that yeah. energy. So we honour the woman whose relic it is, but it yes. just the energy didn't. It just didn't feel. No, it so wasn't Mary Magdalene. Church we're going to. They reckon that they have the whole. They found the whole body of Mary. It's meant to be the skeleton, or the body, preserved body of Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. We don't think it is, but we will go and find we'll out. We'll tune in and we'll see. But it was again. It was like. A message. There was there were some beautiful statues of her. There was a statue of Saint Joan of Arc as well, and a statue of Mary Magdalene kneeling at the foot of the cross of Christ. And I just kept thinking, it feels like a major metaphor for yeah. all women, kind of kneeling at the feet of the patriarchy and saying, "Acknowledge me. Yeah. Acknowledge me. See yeah. me as an equal." It's it's absolutely, and that was the message that mm. I got in there. That again, men wouldn't exist without women. 
<laughs> but your mother's which, people? <laughs> the patriarchy doesn't get that they're equal, different, but equal. And yeah. it feels like even in that split, that it's like a cosmic joke, mm. that split of man versus woman. And mm. it shouldn't be that way. It should be honouring and supporting and being equal and completing not I hate that it's like that Jerry Maguire thing you complete, you complete me. me it's not that <laughs> but it is the balance of the masculine and the feminine mm. and that yes couples are, people are supposed to come together and unite but it doesn't mean that one has power or can dominate or invade or just ugh, you know one over the other repress the yeah. other yeah so anyway in love if if you know it's just that thing isn't it if a woman is cherished if a woman feels loved and honored she'll give herself to you she'll be yours forever Absolutely. she will honor you and devote herself to you and then you can feel even more empowered it's the disempowerment not yeah. not just of women but of the feminine of the innocent of love energy that has caused so many problems in this world so again i know we bang on about it but this is the truth that needs to be revealed on this planet it's all love people it love all... love love anyway we have to run go. <laughs> another deadline running again against the clock so. down the mountain when we run <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> Just driving to St. Maximin, the Basilica of Mary Magdalene in uh, St. Bon. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on the way there now. It is 20 past 3 in the afternoon. Our flight goes at 9 p.m. tonight from Marseille. <laughs> so let's just see. Hopefully we will uh, get everywhere we need to be in the nick of time. As well, always. actually with more time to spare, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful day. We're driving through gorgeous French countryside and uh, yeah, we'll update you from uh, the Basilica. Okay, so behind us, you probably can't see it because it's so sunny, the Basilica of St. Maximum and Mary Magdalene. And uh, we went down into the, the reliquary where her bones are said to be to find a skull. A very nice black skull who, well, I mean, she's always depicted carrying a black skull. So uh, we're, wondering. we're now wondering who that belongs to. They've said that it's a symbol of knowledge and wisdom but I've gone beyond believing what they say and I think it's going to be more than that I don't think yeah. 
the whoever the masters were that started those paintings, the symbolism was multi-layered. So I'm now questioning who that was meant to represent. And we're not, we weren't convinced before we came that it was her. I'm still not convinced no, that it's I her. But I do her. think it was someone connected to her. 1279, yeah. the king found the skull in a box down there. And of course it would be very convenient knowing that it would be a huge pull for pilgrims to come to this area to say that it was her. They obviously yeah. knew that she'd lived here, so it would have been a real coup to have found that. But to be honest, it could have been anybody, I unless got, there were some other bits yeah. of proof that they had, some that other had. evidence that it was her. Yeah, I got a message on the first day that we arrived that it was Martha, her sister. Uh, and again, while we were in there, I got a similar channel message that it was someone in her bloodline. Yeah. So I feel like it could have been someone, I mean, it might not be literally in her bloodline, it could have been somebody who was part of her priestesshood, her lineage. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely someone that knew her teachings and knew definitely. of her and was part yeah. of that tradition. So we're going to check into it a little bit more because, yeah, I think the Mar Martha kind of fits, really, because I don't think she yeah. stayed in the cave with yeah. them. I think she carried on travelling yeah. with the ministry and, and with the teachings. Yeah. Very high energy in there, it definitely. Was high yeah, yeah. But, but not again, like her, not no, her energy. No. Yeah. But then just really struck with how vast and how massive this church is. Bearing in mind that in the early years of the church, they had labelled uh, Mary Magdalene as a prostitute, so it's interesting that they built, that they such, built such an incredible temple yeah. for a woman that was of uh, loose origin originally. They have since uh, confessed, admitted, yeah. not very loudly, that she was not a prostitute and that she was one of the disciples. But it's so vast and it's so grand and it's so over the top and so unnecessary and yeah. as we said you know she lived in a cave yeah. they practiced simplicity they practiced unity people connection and no nothing to do with either. hierarchy yeah. or vast buildings or huge amounts of wealth and of course it's nice to have a beautiful space and to have beautiful things in it and I appreciate that the art and the you know, creating a, a sanctified beautiful space is a good idea but it doesn't need to be 300 foot high and it doesn't need to be built of the finest marble and covered in gold and oh, it's just and when they're flogging little icons about this big for yeah. 25 euros then you question it right it's just all and it's just like people will do it because they feel like it's spiritual and has significance and that they will receive but blessings the significance is in your heart don't trust me i'm a shopaholic like the best of them but, but you know it's in your heart in your heart it's, it's in, in you heart. and you are just as well do. And as I always said to the priest when I was growing up, if I need to speak to God, I'm going to talk to him myself. I don't need exactly. you to get there for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. So pray wherever you are. Be holy. Be connected. In a field. On yeah. a you know on a street wherever. On a rock. On a rock. Yeah. I love that we've got this random van behind us while we're talking in a van. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and again, yet more evidence of a very pregnant looking Mary Magdalene in that church. With, but yeah. I've just noticed from what we're talking about, the van is, has written on it, you, location. You are the location. You are the location. There you go. Yep. <laughs> There's the message. There's Always. The, message. the signs are everywhere <laughs> and you look for them. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, we are now going to dash. We've got to get to the airport and hopefully we will be there in plenty of time to drop off our car. Get get on the plane and then come back and yeah. see what else we can uncover. Just saying goodbye to our little car. We've had the cutest little Renault Twingo. Ben. It's been fantastic. We've loved every minute of it. And Mary Magdalene colour. Yeah, Mary Magdalene. <laughs> all the way. She supported us all the way. We've literally got back to the airport at the perfect amount of time just to get in and get settled. And yeah, it's just been absolutely amazing. We're very grateful for the car and for all of it. Absolutely amazing. It's been a brilliant, impromptu adventure, as usual. Yeah.